Are we ready? The um, meeting public hearing of the City of Falls Church Planning Commission is now in session. Um, Ms. G, would you please call the roll? Present. Here. 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 Um, do I have a uh, motion to adopt the agenda? So move. Would you? Do we? Do I have a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. All right. I am going to suggest that since we do not, we have not had the um, appointment of new or reappointed commissioners, that we uh, hold off on the election of officers, possibly for a period of not longer than 45 days, which would give us give the nominating committee three weeks to get their act together and make a decision and then we can have our nomin our election of officers and appointments to the planning commission city boards and commissions so the the makeup of the planning commission would stay the same until we got our our appointments uh, is that uh, is that okay with the planning commission yes yes mr with um while in theory it is fine with me, uh, I'm just curious, have we gotten any legal sort of advice or opinion whether that's acceptable under the Virginia law? No, I'm not sure it's a legal, uh, it's a local issue. I thought it was more of a um, Virginia issue. I'm, I'm not sure if, uh, I think you we, simply we don't have an opinion. I, I know we've done it until, before. Unless yeah. and until uh, a replacement is. Right, you can serve, at the, yeah. serve until replacement is right. done. Um, I know that um, in the past they've had this happen a couple times. Well, well, serving as a replacement to me is a different issue than postponing the or continuing the election of officers mm -hmm. and whether that's allowed. And, and, and my concern is that this is the kind of action where uh, I, would be, I would be concerned that any action we take over that 45-day period or whatever period we establish would then be um, put to question, could be questioned as being uh, legal action if we have a board that's not representative uh, properly and not under the correct leadership. Um, so I, I'm concerned about the legal issues, not about the makeup of the people on this um, on this board for sure on the on the commission. Yeah. Uh, and I do want to say. Uh, if, if I might, that I think this is really um, um, unconscionable, really, that we do not have this clarity for the Planning Commission. This, this is a, an essential board of this government, uh, and it is uh, shameful, really, that members of this uh, city and the people on this commission would not know their fate after the hard work that I have witnessed um, on the time that I've served with them, that to, to the time that the people who are awaiting their new appointment or their, uh, their reappointment would not know um, in the first week of, uh, after their appointment has expired, to me is, is really unacceptable. I don't think it, it takes into consideration uh, their feelings um, and, uh, and a, a, is a way to recognize really the hard work that, that all of us, but, but those people in particular, have put in. Um, and, and I think uh, as a City of Falls Church, we can do better than that in an era where there is a, a, a constant um, a, account of people asking for accountability, that the City Council wouldn't be accountable to uh, a board like this and to the members who put in all that time and effort so that they don't know whether there are continuing their service to the city, uh, I find very upsetting and uh, puts us in an awkward position or puts me in an awkward position where uh, I need to ask for legal uh, opinions about whether or not our actions over the next 45 days will even be acceptable. Um, uh, I hope the city council does everything in their power to rectify this uh, 
um, as soon as possible, uh, not only for our board's sake, but for the people who uh, are in question here. So I'm very disappointed that we're in this position. I, I, certainly, underst I certainly understand your concerns. Um, I don't think we have a lot of uh, things on the agenda coming up that we would have to rule on, but that's beside the point. Um, your points are well taken, and I could certainly um, <coughs> recommend that we just put it aside for two, till our next meeting, if, if that would be, you know, the 45, it's not the, I, I understand yeah, it's, it's probably not the 45 days, it's, right. it's just that it's not being taken care of. That's uh, not being taken care of, and I don't, want the, I don't want the actions of this board to be, uh, this commission to be questioned because of the position that we've been put in by the I city understand. council. But uh, I do not have a problem uh, due to the, the people who are in our current leadership, uh, have done a wonderful job, and I would support them uh, certainly for the next 45 days, if not longer. Um, I just want to make sure that uh, we are not breaking any state codes. Um, as, Okay. As opposed to just uh, well, local ones. Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't we just um, agree to go ahead until we hear from the city, uh, the city council nominating committee as to how they're doing. And in the meantime, I will check with the, uh, the city attorney and make certain that we're in good standing. Okay. That'd be great. Is that okay with the rest of the commissioners? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. We have consensus. All right. We'll move ahead then with our agenda. Um, we'll move on to receipt of petitions. Um, there seems to be no one in the audience who wishes to make a petition. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, and we have no old business or uh, we have no old business on our agenda. Uh, we'll move on to new business, which is approval of our uh, two, 2014 annual report to City Council. Um, <laughs> Have, have you all had a chance to read it? I was very impressed. Very impressed. Um, I, I didn't realize we were so, I think Miss G keeps track of our every move. It, it is, it, actually it is exciting. It, it's, it's, um, it's, it impressed me. <laughs> I didn't think we were doing that much, but. Madam Chair, I did want to mention, uh, miss, mention it to Miss G, uh, you're even more productive than this document, which has a, litany of good work. Uh, on June 21st, the 20, uh, 2014, uh, the commission sponsored the kickoff meeting for the West Broad Street small area plan effort, which we are working on presently. And so in addition to approving the downtown small area plan, which was ultimately approved by city council, uh, the kickoff for the next plan took place. Mm -hmm. And we are working on that and hope to have a plan to you in draft form for you to discuss in more detail in the coming months. Okay. Is so that, that would be added at, at that would be added in. Okay. Added in as the uh, kickoff meeting for the uh, small area plan for West Broad Street. How could we have forgotten that? Well, if I may, if you to um, look at your upcoming agenda items, we have the second West Broad Street small area plan right. scheduled uh, for Saturday the 7th of February. If, it's, if we're snowed out or, or inclement weather, we have a backup date of Saturday the 21st of February. Well, that's, oh, that's a CIP though. That's Sunday. On which day? The February the 8th. No, that's an open house on the CIP. I was talking about Saturday the 7th of February. Yes, and, but you said if, if we're snowed out, it would be, I thought you said. The 21st. Of, oh, the 21st. 21st. Okay, yes. I didn't hear that. Okay, good. So that, that is a large area. That's just as a reminder, the area between uh, Little Falls Road and the WNOD Trail, mm -hmm. all of West Broad Street. So it's uh, an important lengthy portion of, of the city. It combines actually two small, er, two opportunity areas into one small area plan. I just have... Uh, I'm sure it was inserted as a test to see if I read it, but on uh, lines 279 and 316, my name is misspelled. Oh, no. no yeah. uh, making it hard to search for my name to see if... It was a test. A so I passed the test, and uh, I don't even care if you correct it, but there you go. Which 
<laughs> All right, if everyone has had, a ch has had a chance to read this over and there are no more additions to the annual report, we will, um, yes, um, no more additions? I, I wanted to make, uh, uh, make a point about the Planning Commission, particularly the Chair's lengthy and dedicated uh, involvement in the <clears throat> Mary Ellen Henderson, George Mason school planning process. This has been a major effort this year. There's been a lot of staff time on, on the part of our department involved. Uh, I know there have been many 7.30 Thursday meetings. Also Mr. Meeks and others have been there. Uh, this has been a major effort. It isn't necessarily part of our work plan, but it is leading towards the planning of an important new area of the city. And there may be a way to capture that um, that effort, also the uh, Urban Land Institute TAP, where there was oh, a right. lot of effort and involvement by staff, but also commission members who attended and uh, are aware of that. Uh, it was a major effort as well. Uh, and in terms of regional cooperation, uh, there was a major presentation by Fairfax County on the Seven Corners plan, where they came to this commission, had a work session. So I'd like to, and then they later came along with Penny Gross, the uh, supervisor for right. the district to the city council. I think the commission's involvement in that, the staff's involvement in that was one of the reasons we had had as much discussion about that plan as and, we have. And so, I think um, we, I think they came to the planning commission first and, and we, they did. we expressed a lot of concerns, a lot right. of concerns and, and got them look, we taking a look again at, at their plan and making changes to. Uh... And that happened because the staff was very involved and, and persuaded them to come to us, set those meetings up. So the commission and the staff work on that, I think, mm -hmm. uh, helped the planning, uh, the planning for that area and helped the council be in a position to have its input at an early point on that plan before it got to uh, the Board of Supervisors in, in Fairfax, and I think ultimately will have been will have very positive effects for the city. So I think on the regional side, uh, that would be um, that's an important important item. Well, I think you're right. I think those things should be added. Um, and and it is a very impressive a deadline list. as to when these have to go before the city council. Uh, I don't know that there's a deadline, but I just it is a very impressive list. I want to thank Deborah D for putting this all together. Um, it's there's a lot of good work here. I just there's even more good work that's been done. So there's not a specific deadline. Um, I could make the um, amendments that we've talked about tonight, and you could look at it again at your next meeting if yeah. you'd like. I think that would be a good idea. Yeah. Okay. And then usually one of the planning commissioners will go to the council meeting right. and make the presentation of the report. I think that's probably a really good idea because I think that that meeting uh, with the Seven Corners Task Force was a turning point yeah. in I think, I think how that's they correct, yes. were viewing this versus how we were viewing it. Well, the other things too, I mean, it's, it's not only the planning commissioners who, who, who work on these issues, but I think, I think the, the idea of getting all the staff time that goes into it into the report is really yeah. important. So, you know, you can expand the hours if you'd like to. But there is a, a, an awful lot of good stuff that happened last year, and hopefully we're, we'll see more of that coming to fruition in, the, in, the, in 2015. And only one project approved, yeah. I feel like I voted on some of these things. You said I'm absent. <laughs> I, I could have sworn I, I, I remember, voted on this stormwater thing. At all. Ever. I remember voting on this stormwater thing. Did I vote on something else? Maybe. All right. I won't. All right. Let me. Well, I, I remember doing. I mean. Well, I well but, but we talked about these things over a period of several weeks. And maybe you didn't, weren't there for the actual vote, but you were there for I get discussion. that adrenaline rush when I push the thing. I like I remember voting more. I guess. Okay, it's all right. Let it go. Maybe you, you voted by proxy it a lot anyway. <laughs> well. That's what okay, so we're going to we're going to review this at the next meeting. Um, 
the discussion of the capital improvements program, um, we went over some of that with Cindy and she's going to get us further information. But I'm going to pass out to you copies of the draft. This is very much a draft survey that they're intending to um, have the community, review, uh, the community input. That's good. So, um, okay, everybody's got one. Um, Cindy would like to have any comments by Wednesday because she has a Thursday deadline to, um, to get it finalized. I think this is a, a big improvement on how we did it. I think it's an absolute in necessity. Past. It's something we certainly learned with the Mount Daniel referendum and people just do not understand mm -hmm. CIP process. Of course, sometimes, you know, it's difficult to understand, right? Right. But I think that there are so many questions that were brought up and uh, that it's extremely important to know the process of thinking ahead and actually having things in a budget process that people do not understand. We're not telling our story. Well, I think this is going to be very helpful to, um, to us and to the community as well. I mean, it, it can't help but it give them some insight as to how this is put together. Any other comments on the CIP? Russ? Uh, yeah, I, I just looking at this, I, I'm just scanning it real quickly. Um, there seems to be some explana explanations here uh, about what we're talking about. And I think one of the questions I get the most often, uh, and I know what, what I struggled with when I first came on the Planning Commission, was the pay-as-you-go system. There's the, the other categories are fairly self-explanatory, debt financed or mm -hmm. um, from grants and things like that. But if, there's a, if we're explaining things, I think how we're funding it should also be a really small, you know, another bullet point section that says, you know, how do we pay, for, how do we finance these things? And uh, the pay-as-you-go, I think, specifically needs to be explained. I yeah, I, I, that was one of the things I brought up to Cindy when we were first talking about it. Um, I said, nobody understands what pay-as-you-go means. Yep. It's, it's one of these uh, Also about insider the process of uh, matching grants. Mm. Because that gets really confusing, you know, where the money is and that we've got to match it in order to use it. Rob? Well, although it says the CIP is updated annually and is subject to change with each update, I think one of the confusions with Mount Daniel or other projects is because these things are in the CIP, people think they are already approved. Mm -hmm. And they're um, out several years. Which is, which <laughs> is my great challenge is always that we do these placeholder numbers as if we have agreed that that's the number. Um, and I would prefer to not do a placeholder number if we have actual numbers or we're really moving forward or whatever, and just to clarify and, that. And, and so she's got no one sentence, and yeah. that could be a little bit expanded. Yeah. That would I, be think, I think one of the things that has to be explained, and I don't know, it didn't seem to me, well, just that we have these parameters we have to be in. It has to, that we can only have so much debt and we can only have the CIP be so big. And that's why we end up with these placeholders because if we didn't do that, we wouldn't be holding enough CIP for projects we know are coming. And so I don't like placeholders either, but I understand the use of them. Well, but, but what is the use? So what are we, it's a rhetorical question, obviously. So we have $100 million for a new high school. We can't put $100 million in the budget, so we're going to put a placeholder number of $36 million because that's, that's what the... That's the most we can hold for you, right? Okay. But Doesn't the, that seem crazy to you? It does seem Doesn't crazy. Doesn't that seem like a strange way to run a business? I, it is a strange way to run a business, except that last year, with the library discussion, one of the reasons we knew we couldn't afford the $18 million is it wouldn't fit in the CIP with the upcoming costs we knew were. Now, if we didn't have any placeholders in there for schools at all, we would be like, oh, we've got plenty of well, capacity. But, well, but, but <laughs> for the library in particular, though, there were other concerns. Some, right. There was a concern about actual tearing it down and rebuilding. Right. There, were, there were other concerns. Um, and but so... I, but the primary to and, me was we didn't really have the, 
the ability to do the amount that they mm -hmm. need. Well, but recall the other concern, the, the biggest concern that I had is that we were spending all that money and getting no parking. Yeah. So, oh, so you're right. I was so the one who said spend... if we're going to do the 18 million, let's go to the 21 million and get mm -hmm. the parking underneath. Yeah. But, you know, and that's kind of what we heard today. Some people were like, let's go back to the big project. So. So, you know, I'd like to reflect back on what Russ said at the, that meeting, whichever one was, the about the, uh, at the joint uh, city council, school board, and planning commission about mentioning the fact that, you know, that there's a lot of things that should be being looked at, but there's just absolutely no space for them within the CIP. Right. Right. Well, and it no does, and you know, it tended to open up the last couple of years a little bit more, but uh, certainly doesn't give us a wide open playbook for things. It's still very constrained, and also that it is a constraint put on by council. Right. That is their. That is their. Was set as a policy set policy right. uh, so that you know and if that policy were to change a little bit maybe there could be a little bit more shuffle room well maybe that's part of the language that can be in there though that policy is a good word that there are policies that set the amount of debt the city can take on and the amount of projects that can be in a CIP so that these are these are these are parameters that, that the CIP has to meet and that's I guess what's a good word yeah, for it yeah, so there's not an, because I think people also need to know the CIP is not unlimited. We can't just add whatever we want uh -uh. to it. Can't put a bucket of wishes in there. Even if we had the money, we would actually, and even if we had the money somehow came to us, we would have to change those parameters to spend more money. What do we do? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, so, as you know, Melissa, surveys are delicate things you, know, <laughs> they're you, delicate. you're never quite sure what well you're and I, I was because I was thinking even about when you try to manipulate the language so. I thought like question two about the CIP funding and timing I'm not really sure if we're going to get anything really valuable out of that because as complete CIP project with a five-year time period with more cost up front or complete CIP over a 10-year I mean people are going to answer that based on well, are there projects they really want done? This or do is they what my comment taxes? was. My comment was, yeah. if, if they really want sidewalks, they're going to pick one thing. If they really want the school, they're going to pick another thing. So. Right, exactly. It's just, I think that question is. Right. Um, on the number one where it says transit, it says vehicle acqu acquisition for more frequent services. Are we talking about buses or shuttles on the transit one? It's the second from the bottom. Mm hmm I just think that that's a really awkward terminology there. I don't know what it means, really. I don't know what it means either. Okay, well, because I was like, does that mean more buses, more shuttles? shuttles? That's what I thought too, but I think it needs to be more clear. I mean, is it golf carts? I mean, because there's something to be said for having electrically charged golf carts we could drive around. <laughs> <laughs> Could I check one out? Just drive it around. <laughs> just like, just like bike share. Eco-friendly second vehicle. Cart share. Um. <laughs> yeah, that is. I can understand the shelters and ben benches, but I don't understand the vehicle acquisition part. Okay. Well, Any other suggestions? Because uh, I'm going to be meeting with Cindy. Uh, I'm trying to think of the. The, the school else. ones yeah. to me seems. Uh, almost too vague because there's, I mean, the, the difference between a renovation and what we're potentially proposing with uh, George Mason, it, it doesn't seem to capture what we're talking about to me. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, renovation is, you know, the five to even 15 million range. We're talking about something that's has been a placeholder of around $100 million. And to say those are comparable by just one ranking. I, I, I'm not, I don't have the solution. I just feel like okay. that's just lumped in there like, hey, George Mason is in the same category as TJ, and, and they're, they're not. Could it say renovation, expansion, and or new schools con construction? So it covers all three? 
it's not that you can't make the description more uh, clear. The, the issue is that that's one ranking. That's one. Right. It, it's yeah. just well, I, schools. Well, I think what they're trying to get from this is if, if people, if schools are the most important thing for the majority of people who answer the survey, or um, does that come come down more in the middle and they're looking for other things? Yeah. I don't know how they're they're going to rank these. Well, I think it's also going to count on who actually takes the survey. Well, it's true. And and who can rally people to take the survey to pick them as number one. <laughs> well, that, 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 that's my question I have. You know, I see we're capturing some demographic data here. I don't know what our intention is in terms of analyzing the data. Um, I, to be honest with you, I don't even know how reliable SurveyMonkey is as a tool that can't be manipulated. So I think it's fine to survey people. Uh, I think we should be careful about how much weight we put on the results unless we have some professional advice about the reliability and the source, you know, I mean, we capture some demographic data, but should we be capturing more if we're going to actually try to take the results? Well, yeah, and there, there, there's something to be said for the fact that we're not asking for age or household income, which could make a big difference. Yeah, and I don't know if we want this. to or not. I'm just, you know. I don't know either. If we get the results back and it's like, hey, nobody cares about the schools, I'm going to be like, well, who filled this thing out? Because that's not what I hear yeah. when I walk around town. So. But, okay. I, you know, I think I, it's, I, I think it would be an interesting experiment. I think that's what I was going to say. I it's better than nothing. I don't know if yeah. we'll get that much out of it more than it's really going to be who rallies who to really fill out as many of these as possible that's going to rank near one. But what it does, there's another way of using surveys. Sometimes we use surveys in my company not just to get some information, but we actually use it to educate. Because in the going through the survey and answering the questions, it actually gets them to start thinking about the subject. So I think we can look at this. It is an education tool, too. And that they're going to, if they're going to fill it out, they're going to have to try to understand the CIP more. Well, you still have until Wednesday to, um, oh. to get I was, comments in. So. Okay. So but I think all these comments yeah. are really good. I, th I think that cyclist facilities is misleading because certainly bicycle racks and bicycle routes, you know, to some extent, they, you know, you have to have the uh, certain amount of money involved also. You know, so that seems almost too simplistic in a way. Well, it's just like, Rob, if you were answering this survey, and you're, I know you're a, a biker, um, you wouldn't put number one there in front of the schools, would you? No. I guess so. Much. Okay. So I, you just wonder what, you okay. know, what demographic they're trying to get to here. Yeah, yeah. 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 OK. Um, I'd like to move on uh, to the other business, which we have none of, but we do have approval of the minutes for, well, this says the 5th of December, but our minutes say the 1st of December. So I don't have my calendar in front of me. Was it the 1st or the 5th, Ms. G? The 1st, OK. All right, has everyone looked over the minutes for the 1st of December? Any corrections or additions? Okay. Do we have a motion to approve? I so move. I'll second. Moved and second to approve the minutes as presented. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Mr. Dijon, you are abstaining since you weren't here. Yes. Okay. Uh, Planning Commission reports. I do have okay, a couple Lindy. things. Uh, first of all, the, at the EDA meeting tomorrow night, uh, uh, the, uh, the plan that EDA has funded is going to be coming in for the pocket park or the small park and uh, within the 100 block. So they're going to be presenting that tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. 
and so that I think that was rather interesting. The other thing... Um, That's something that will come before the Planning Commission? Uh, it would have to eventually. Mr. Snyder, is that... Even though I EDA has, <laughs> has paid for it or is funding it or whatever, is that something that would come before I the Planning I would think it would have to be, approval? and it, it won't be free. Um, also, the city staff had done some thinking about uh, that area with regard to the downtown plan, which was approved by city council, and had some interesting ideas of some uh, interim kinds of, what would you call it, Paul, pop-up parks. Uh, we have some ideas for downtown that uh, we put together, which we'd be happy to share with the commission um, at your leisure, maybe after, I don't know if we have time, but after the parks presentation. I think it's going to be a very important to have some proper communication on this situation because it's getting carp met. Uh, carp yeah, I think I for those of you who went to the carp tree lighting, I mean, clearly it's a space that could be, you know, very active. Uh, you know, what's there has been there a long time and is kind of tired. Um, and so, you know, what we want that area to be like is, I think, it's a worthy question. So, but, so they're uh, they're just funding the plan. They've, they've right. funded design work, and There's we've had be we've three had three options that, and we've had some forth. initial input. We also planning staff also did some brainstorming about some ideas we had for that area. It was you know just because we we are thinking about those things, mm -hmm. and be happy. To, and some of that was that was shared with their consultants. Um, some of it looked at trying to encourage some outdoor dining other kinds of activity in the area between the buildings because we have you know limited sidewalk space and trying to create an attractive entry point into into that this part is of a the little area. park that's between the dogwood tavern yes. and the there's an alleyway and there's yeah. some planting areas some large trees a lot of mulch some uh, the unity club is in behind right. it. there's a but isn't that yeah. all parking I mean there is some parking in the back, and there is some, some of it's green space, some of it's parking space, some of it's sidewalk space. City yes. owned spaces. City uh, owns right the property. Up to yes. approximately, not all the way to park, but to. A certain, they own pieces going up yeah. to, toward park. Okay. So. All right, uh, it'll be interesting to see the plan. It should, it should be really interesting to, as a starting point, but I think cooperation is going to be key on that. Uh, we are, I just. Still want to bring up that we are on the naughty list with the tree commission, and uh, and so uh, I know that uh, there's been requests to staff and everything to make sure that uh, anything that we're planning on doing, looking at the streetscape plans or anything like that, to have the tree commission involved with <coughs> and. Uh, and so hey Lindy, do you know are they um, are they doing any research into ways to make grade level tree pits viable because uh, right now they've basically said we, we've been right doing it this way for 25 years we'd like to keep doing dead it this trees. way what's that <laughs> never mind I know I just I, I they're mad at us that's fine I've asked a simple question which is I don't know they're the tree experts can they do I, some research into I this I think thing the whole thing is, give us some is that that is the plan. We shall not deviate from the plan. One of the things I would mention is, as part of the West Broad Street plan, we hope to take a look at uh, some ongoing changes that have been made in practice to the Broad Street streetscape. And those range from, we now have a 20-foot setback instead of 14 to 16 feet. Uh, we have a, a different bus shelter than the benches and the trash cans, which is the present standard. And so, um, and even on the Kensington, I think we recommended, staff recommended that you retain the edge uh, bricking around the uh, tree area, but move it just behind the curb line to get more, more space. Uh, if we go to upgraded lighting, for example, and go to LED lighting to replace the older, less efficient lighting, that would also be a change. So there are ongoing things, which just an update to how you build and maintain a streetscape that I think are, are things that we can talk about as part of the small area plan. And we, we hope to, uh, to have some 
effort to do a little bit of collaborative work between the Planning Commission and the Tree Commission to talk through some of the details of, of, of that West Broad Street, of the Broad Street Street. Well, right. so I, I would I think we can, we, we, we're very interested in trying to promote that discussion. Let me, let me suggest an area where there may be a quicker and easier rapprochement. And that is the South Washington study, which seemed to go on and on forever, and has those beautiful fighting pits as a result. The You're talking about the North, North Washington, Washington Street? North, North Washington, Washington yeah. sorry. So that's not what's on the plan, what ended up being there. That isn't the beautiful renderings that we right, got. Right. Um, so my sort of question about this is, um, when we've sort of approved these plans, a lot of times it, it isn't actually what gets built. Do you know what I'm saying? So I know that what we approved wasn't, like I, I had my kids standing it the other day. And, like, you it, couldn't it, find it, them? He literally could use that as a fighting pit because it comes up to about right here. I mean, like if he had a rifle or something, he'd be no, perfect No, I pulled the this. plans out that we approved, um, the actual drawings, and went over and looked at it, and it doesn't look like anything. It doesn't look like anything we, like that. That was, I think, a major, so, and it was so expensive. I yeah. think the question would be, are there some of these areas where we've sort of said this is going to be the plan, but then it's gotten built and we've said, well, wait a minute, that doesn't, that didn't really work like we did, because maybe there's a way we can go back and sort of Well, revisit that's, some of that these. area is certainly one to talk about, um, and we'd like to do a debriefing of the people who, the uh, Northgate project who were, when the site plan and special exception were approved, were approved to build the, the broad street, streetscape. They were persuaded to build the newly but adopted the plan. It, it, there were a lot of issues, it turned out, uh, that are, we could talk about it in an, another meeting, but it's, it's worthy of a work session. Lessons learned, what the costs were, what the, the benefits. Um, there were a lot of changes made as you got into that plan being approved because the plan really didn't work very well in terms of, and so there were a lot of, a lot of input from the Arborist, Shirley Street, and others about about how it needed to be modified. So that's, that's a whole broader topic. But we would like to, at least on the West Broad Street project, bring up and identify some of the ongoing improvements and changes to yeah, the Broad Street plan. Well, well, well and so that's, that's my point. Yeah. As we've gone through this, yeah. we've gotten, I think, theoretically, more sophisticated uh, in how we've kind of thought about some of these. Well, I think on the, on the North Washington Street streetscape, I think you need to evaluate whether or not the effort there, which was, I think, largely looking at trying to do uh, water quality improvements by putting water through these uh, catchment areas, if you will, that would have some landscaping in them, whether that is really, whether that's worked or not. And... Uh, yeah, but so... It's not just the appearance, it's... Yeah, but it is the appearance, because what we voted for, I, I appreciate the water quality and I appreciate that, that but, but what that we voted by. for is not, doesn't look like what got built. No. Well, we can have it in more detail. We have a work session on that. There's a lot, you know, there were lots of blocks on that. And personally, I'm not pleased with what's been done out there. I think there are better ways to spend the money. To in, And I, I'm not a fan of what's out there, but that's a personal opinion, I, they're very expensive, and I, you know, I think we'd be better off with trees and good sidewalks. Well, I th I, the Tree Commission is just very worried about uh, the Broad Street plan, and it is an older plan, and there's been a lot of uh, new things that have come along that need to be really looked at. Uh, they are also very upset because of the proposed group home where there it might have been a, po a pocket park so there's there's some disconnect all the way along and some yeah. but um, I just wanted to report that but also then I went on with uh, Lauren Bruce to um, Dunbar High School and got some information um, that is an amazing school uh, there's things that I really loved about it, other things I didn't. But the first thing is it is indestructible. The materials they put in were 
the best quality, terrazzo, tile, you know, uh, they even had, and I was the only one that wanted to go look at a bathroom, but those are very important in a high school. And uh, tile, floor to ceiling, and then some sort of uh, material for the stalls that you couldn't do any graffiti on. Uh, but I think that, that they've not had a single bit of graffiti done, so I do hope that that, uh, you know, proves out for their good fortune. But um, the uh, geothermal uh, stormwater collected is used for flushing. Huge amount of uh, environmental situations. And I've got some materials. Be happy to pass them on down and happy to have you borrow them if you want them. Um, just uh, some really great stuff going on down there. But, um, you know, things that are very important to that neighborhood. For instance, they do have a community clinic there. We said, oh, that looks a little bit big for a high school clinic. But they partnered with uh, Howard University for dental and medical. And so parts of it are totally able to be uh, left open to the public, and then the instructional areas can be easily closed off and everything. It was very, very, very well planned. But if anybody wants, I've got some stuff. Thank you. Pretty Renee. amazing. Thank you. Um, anyone else? With a quick thing. I'm Melissa. No, I just want to mention, I am going to go to the um, January 9th meeting on Friday, the Monday, the morning meeting on the um, downtown, mostly because I, I already have, prop I own property down there as well anyway, so I got an invitation as, as the owner, so I two thought, hats. I have two hats, so if, if no one else can go because it is a work day, I will definitely be there to um, represent the planning commission. Yeah, I think they were hoping that we all weren't going to go. I know. I was expecting Lindy to do it. Tenor Hill is this Friday. Oh. That Tenor Hill thing. Gee, I'm sorry. It's all sold what out. Tenor Hill thing? <laughs> but well, it's sold out. The gala. The gala. And oh. then the other thing is the, uh, the she, dedication. Thank you for thank saving you. me. Uh, it's Saturday. They're going to have the ribbon cutting over at the, at the park area. Over at the, but the yeah, other, uh, the gala itself is all sold out, so it's going to be very, very, you know, good. They could have used a bigger venue. Um, Thank you. Okay. Uh, anyone else? All right. We'll move on then to planning director's report. Mr. Steiner, please. <clears throat> yes. Um, a couple of things were mentioned. I'd just like to repeat. There is the uh, dedication for the Tenor Hill Historic Site. I know the commission has been involved in that. Um, I believe there was uh, a good bit of work done. We did some administrative approvals for the park area. It's, the construction's almost complete, and that is this Saturday at, at, on the 10th at 1 p.m. Um, we did uh, have a, um, we do have tablets now that we've gotten from IT that we are, <coughs> They're uh, made by HP that we're trying to learn how to use. Um, we got those on Wednesday the 31st. Uh, there was a, a uh, temporary certificate of occupancy issued for Jesse Thackeray School on Wednesday. They have uh, moved their furniture in and it's presently, there. it's ongoing. Um, tennis court's been fenced off um, and that work will continue. But the, uh, the building is complete and the kids are in there, the parking lot's functioning and striped. And, and that's preschool only? I believe so. And um, if you've been by, it's uh, kind of a cheerful bright yellow with the green roof. Uh, from the building inspection side of things, it's a greatly improved building in terms of safety. So a lot of effort went into keeping it on track, uh, working with schools to uh, get the, all the inspections lined up. It was not an easy project, but I think when that entire project is complete, um, including the tennis court improvements, um, we'll have a very nice piece of city property. As you may recall, the, all of the undergrounding of uh, water storage is under the parking lot. 
So it will not, if there is ever subsidence or other kinds of problems, it'll be easily repaired or accessed rather than being under the tennis courts. So I know there was a lot of concern about that. There were meetings and Planning Commission had a couple of, didn't we have a 2232 hearing on that, if I recall? I'll probably add that to our list. <laughs> Uh, but a lot of work done by this group and the schools on the neighborhood side. So um, a, a good result, um, a good result there. And I, and I heard just because people ask that the tennis courts can't be resurfaced till spring when it warms up, I think. Someone's yes, I believe that's correct. They're doing the, the drainage is being put around. My understanding is, this is anecdotal, but people in the neighborhood that drainage problems with the big rains we had, of those problems have disappeared. Okay. So ho hopefully that's the case, and uh, um, I think the uh, the tennis courts, from what I hear, will be able to be uh, resurfaced without having to be rebuilt. Uh, so that'll also be a good result. And uh, if you get a chance, uh, go by and and take a look. Um, we did. Uh, we have a, a new staff person in Young Kwan who had worked with us at the counter before, and she is helping us on the building safety side and on the um, helping us with plan uh, <coughs> handling plans and and uh, working with Kurt Deschermaker we've inventoried all of our plans and went through all of our uh, plans that now can be boxed up and sent off to Iron Mountain uh, we're trying to make room for the activity that's taking place I think she's going to be invaluable to us uh, her funding source is coming through our technology fee so uh, we're, we're working on trying to be more efficient in the office and see how we can touch plans fewer times and be more efficient with how they flow through the process um, as the new buildings go up and we go from the concrete parking garages to the high the, the taller residential uh, apartments and commercial uses there's going to be a big demand in terms of uh, inspections and plan review that's a lot more intense than the parking garage so we're probably going to need an additional uh, building safety inspector, plan reviewer, to help keep things moving. So I'm just letting you know that. Um, we have been uh, trying to make new space for out of space we've got. So if you're uh, Jerry McDonald uh, transformed an area that we had had into an, a work area and a plan storage area. So if you're in the neighborhood, we can show you where that's going. Um, we also are working on trying to get a, another transportation person uh, working with, with uh, human, human services to assist uh, Paul, Paul Stoddard in his work on transportation and comprehensive planning. So um, we hope to have somebody on board this spring. This is, that's one of the areas that the city council had identified as, as the manager needing to address. And so uh, we're working diligently to try to bring somebody on board. To assist with that um, it was a busy year um, it, it proved it's going to prove to be I think another busy year ahead um, there's a lot of activities you know that's going to be coming forward on the broad and west project and there are other projects that are, we're talking to various people about so if the economy holds and just, just the projects that are going to be underway are going to be challenging so we're looking ahead at a busy year we do hope to get progress made on the small area plan for broad for the West Broad Street, and um, uh, hopefully bring that to closure before the end of uh, the fiscal year, and then try to launch the next uh, project uh, again in the summertime, uh, so we can keep on track with that. Some of you, I think, were able to go to the uh, grand opening of the Good Fortune uh, supermarket. Oh yeah, and uh, that's quite a busy and big. A brand new place. Um, I think they did a very nice job on the exterior of the building, uh, the way it's integrated into the rest of the shopping center. The parking lot, which I know this group spent a lot of time on looking at circulation, seems to be laid out very well, functioning well. They're doing a very good job of keeping all the carts up near the store. So I've visited a number of times and it, it flows and works very well. So. Hopefully they'll do well and, and bring a lot of revenue to the city. Certainly seem to be a lot of uh, very interested customers who are enjoying the store. Yeah, the prices well, are great. Uh, and let's, let's hope they don't come back to us looking for more parking. They have plenty of parking now. 
Parking looks like it's working fine, and I do think with a lot of the effort, I'm looking at Worcester with Disca and others, of trying to make sure that the design of that layout was properly done and is paid off, it, it functions well. Very good circulation up there. So, so those are some, some big events. Uh, we, um, um, we are going to be also uh, investigating a possible mini tap to look at the city property yard. Um, so we'll keep you more informed as we look into that a little mm -hmm. more. Looking at how that can best be used, um, it's an important piece of property. So, any any questions for me? Um, I had a very quick question, uh, which I just mean to keep simple. So when we did the downtown small area plan, it didn't necessarily take in the parking that would be adjacent, theoretically adjacent to the library, but. It identified it as a possible parking garage location. Well, okay. I'm sorry. It, it's outside the area plan. It's outside the area plan, but it uh -huh. identified it. Do, yeah. do, do, is, it is it simple to s sort of do some sort of cost-benefit analysis from that small area plan and from that location as to the valuable how valuable the extra level of deck may be. Um, and, and let me back up a second. It is, as someone mentioned, it is in the West Broad Street area. We, we, did, a, we did a look at possible parking garage locations aside from the small area playing. That is one that we looked at. Garrison Kit did various schemes. Um, and uh, it is a well-located site. I would guess that in our small area plan for West Broad Street, that we will be showing that as a possible parking garage location. Well, and so if you're looking at efficiencies, certainly it's a lot more efficient to go up more, multiple levels than to build one level or two levels, uh, because you know it's the it's the mobilization. What we heard to, tonight, it's the foundations. I would certainly recommend any garage you build be built to have other levels in the future. I think it's a very good investment. Um, well, it's it's a tricky location, though, and and the yeah. reason I asked it in the context of the of the downtown small area mm -hmm. plan is it seems to me that certainly if you're going to the farmers market you would park there. Certainly, right. if you're going to the library Starbucks. you would park park there or Starbucks. But if you're going to, you know, the Dogwood or the State Theater, I don't. I don't think so. And, and so I'm curious when you look at the, the question really is about the process. When you look at these areas, do you, are you sort of saying, well, you know, if you have a dollar, you would love to have a parking garage here as opposed to there, I get, based on the existing density? I guess what I would say, in, I, I think when you're west of Little Falls, you're getting more into the question of, what kind of parking do we need for the City Hall public park campus? In other words, if we think of the City Hall and the community center and, and Cherry Hill Park and the library, uh, along with Park Avenue, which the city owns, as the municipal campus, then you would, if there's an ability to build a garage in that area, it's one that serves that campus. Just as in the present day when the farmer's market's going full tilt, Many, many people are parking in that garage, in that lot presently, just by arrangement and agreement, by the gener generosity. People own the property. So I think it's more of a city hall, Cherry Hill, a library kind of location. Certainly there could be some commercial benefit as well, uh, possibly the shopping areas nearby, the medical offices. But I, I think it's more strategically located for City Hall, the medical buildings, and the shopping center than it is for downtown, quote unquote, if you see downtown as being east of Little Falls. Correct. Yeah. But it's a good site. But and that's only two blocks. One thing from that Little was Falls. not figured, was not talked about at the work session was you know, if you're not paying for land, guess what? Land's expensive. Right. We sold, ex we sold land to Harris Teeter for $4 million. So when you start figuring in, if you're able to get property and do parking without having to pay for land by, by mutual arrangement or agreement or public-private partnership, there is some value to that that, you know, aside from how much is the physical, you know, 
concrete and foundation is going to cost. The land costs, one, if you can find it, two, if it's got the right shape, and three, what's it going to cost you? If it's not expensive, it could be a bargain. Right. Well, and we don't have access to the 55 spaces now, which was Correct. We don't. council was missing. They, they were... They were <coughs> good. Thank it's you. also kind of building a parking garage in reverse, because if you're building an underground garage, the most expensive levels, the lowest level underground, the foundation, the digging, the dewatering, and all of that. To build a flat garage, and you have to take away that hillside, you're basically building that lower level first, then another level. The least expensive levels are going to be the ones that are coming up right, right. further. So I certainly would advocate spending the money to go taller if you needed to in the future. Or even putting a, 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 a rooftop space on top of a garage where you might have under roof a large formatted area someday that could be used for a variety of purposes, meeting rooms and other things like that, which would protect the garage over time from deterioration from water, salt, water infiltration, deterioration of concrete and re reinforcing bars. I have a question regarding the um, Harris Tita and uh, the Tina Hill project. Do you, do you have any um, progress report on those? They are making, they are making good progress. I think um, the, uh, the commercial level is coming out of the ground now at uh, Harris Teeter. And um, I would think by the end of February that should be topped out in terms of the concrete platform. I think Tinner Hill is also making good progress. And I'm trying to remember, I think they were saying they thought by the end of March they might have the, the concrete platforms built and then be able to start going vertical above that. But it's remarkable to watch the work that's been going on. And we've been fortunate to have relatively mild weather. Um, they are making a lot of good progress. Madam Chair. Yeah. Uh, could we also have an update on uh, the Howard Herman Park and also the West End Park? They really have started doing, I know they really have done a lot of work and just the progress report on it. Um, I think it's Mike Wentworth, is that our, Mike Whit, Whit, Whitfield? Yeah. Mike Whitfield, who's one of our uh, construction supervisors. He's been working with Parks and uh, I think he reported this morning that, you know, they are making good progress there. There, has, there have been some weather delays, but it's, it's moving ahead. And so uh, some of those projects are moving ahead. We can try to get an update for you uh, at your next meeting, or I don't know if Paul has more information, but that, it's good to see the work going on. The West End, on. really, it's exciting. Of course, yes. we can't see as much as you can on the Howard Herman. The Howard E. Herman is a mud pit. It's a mud pit. Colossal, messy pit of mud that's sucking in equipment. It's so muddy. It's a mess. But that doesn't mean it won't turn out nice. It's just we're gonna in lose, the we're gonna very uncomfortable equipment. viewing stage at this point. And also, I would be greatly remiss if we did not somehow reach out and thank the city arborists uh, for uh, and f uh, Mike Collins and everybody for getting the lights up in the downtown mm -hmm. area. That was, you know, that was. Uh, How long are they going to be up? I think until March. From <coughs> I believe I know, that's what I heard. Yeah. Uh, because that's when the trees start leafing out. But you know that was done in such a short planning area of time, and it was, you know, it was a great start to it all, and uh, it was really fun down there the night that they we turned them on and everything. It was almost giddy, yeah. you know, just the fact that oh, we got, and you know, I know there've been complaints and everything, but. You know, it's a great Mostly start. I've heard good things, but... It's um, a great start, and frankly, uh, watch night, all kinds of really great comments coming from people who don't live here. And that's another example of changing approaches and something that wasn't oh, able to be to done. watch night, too. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't able to be done in the past, but with new thinking, has been able to be done, lighting the trees. So that's an example of flexibility, so... And also all the work for Watch Night. We should yeah. always be thanking people all over the place. Well, that's not 
not, that's not, that doesn't come under our purview. So I think. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. I would like to accept that motion. Because Absolutely. We have Paul waiting for us with yeah. his wonderful report. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 For the record, I'll I will I'll second, post it. second it. But we're going to do that. And so we're going to have the work session next. Can we stay up here, or do we? Yes. Yeah, yeah. If you would stay up there for the presentation, and then after the presentation, we'll break and come down to the table. And I would I would like to just mention Paul's been Paul's done a great job of moving the new chapter forward. Uh, this again, based on the same design that we came up with and have used now for mobility for all modes. Um, again, this will be a chapter once adopted that will live on the web, will be more interactive, a lot more friendly and useful than the present plan while retaining much of the good work that's in the present plan document. So I want to thank Paul for all his good work on this. Uh, so thank you, Chair Rogers, members of the Planning Commission, uh, uh, for having the time to do this work session tonight. Uh, I want to run through this presentation, and then we'll break out of this format, and we'll go into more of, more of a sort of discussion roundtable type discussion. And, and this, is, uh, this will be filmed, so this can be seen? Yeah, so this presentation is being filmed and broadcasted uh, so that uh, people, no matter where they jump in in the planning process, they can... We have to uh, speak to in our microphones if we ask you a question. Yes, please. Okay. Yes, please. Uh, so just to, to lead into this presentation and sort of put us in the right frame of mind for the conversation later, uh, if you look at the bottom of the staff report, you'll see sort of the timing section. We're coming into sort of the close of this planning process for this project. Uh, so here we are, January 5th, planning commission work session. And then from here, we're trying to get out to a last visit to the Rec and Parks Board this Wednesday, and then asking you all to participate in a joint work session with council on January 20. Uh, and assuming uh, all the groups are in support of the, the, the plan in its sort of current form, uh, then we'd come back to you all on February 2nd as an action item to get your approval on this chapter, uh, and then February 9 would be the final action by City Council. So we really are uh, trying to hit the glide path for adoption here. So with that, I'll jump into the presentation. Uh, so uh, uh, I always start off with this slide about why are parks important. Uh, parks speak to a number of different interests that people might have in the city. So there are social and health benefits to parks, there are environmental benefits to parks, there are economic benefits to parks. So whether it's social interaction and exercise you're looking for, uh, if you're interested in air quality, uh, water quality, water quantity, uh, wildlife habitat, tree canopy, uh, business attraction, labor attraction, or just making it an overall nicer place to live, there's something in the park system that's for you. So what are we going to talk about uh, in this presentation? I've already motivated uh, parks with the previous slide. Uh, I will throw in a slide about what the comprehensive plan is so uh, we have a sense of what we're trying to accomplish with this chapter. Uh, we'll go over the planning process, the steps we took to get to this point. Uh, then an overview of what's in the draft chapter. So what does the future park system look like? And what are the implementation priorities for getting to that future park system? So the comprehensive plan, uh, I think you all will know this, uh, but this is included in the presentation for anyone who's watching at home. Uh, the comprehensive plan is a policy guide for development of the city. So it speaks to different elements of development, whether they're land use, natural resources, transportation, uh, affordable housing, all those things are in here. And so as a policy guide, it's used in the budgeting process, it's used to identify projects, and also to prioritize those projects. And so then each individual chapter within that comprehensive plan uh, speaks to a specific element. In this case, we're talking about parks, open space, and recreation. And so there's a vision and goals for what those ought to look like. And then there's an analysis of what do we have uh, in the existing system today, what's missing, what are the opportunities to uh, fill in the gaps, uh, and then what's our priority, uh, what are our priorities for getting that done. So the planning process, we've been going at this for about eight months now. Uh, we kicked this off in June of last year, 2014. 
uh, and that was with work sessions with the City Council, with the Planning Commission, with the Rec and Parks Advisory Board. Uh, then we went into the brainstorming process. We went out to every board and commission. Uh, we went out to multiple civic groups. We went out to the community uh, to gather up all the ideas that people were interested in in the park system and what the park system meant to them. Uh, and then we tried to prioritize all those ideas, and that's what we're doing, uh, we're closing out now. Uh, we went out and did a web survey. Uh, we had over 400 responses to the web survey this time. Um, we uh, talked to the Planning Commission, we talked to the Rec and Parks Advisory Board, we talked to city, we're going to talk to City Council. Uh, we also had some staff analysis of sort of what we heard, because uh, you want to know what people want and then what actions you need to do first in order to get to your long-term goals. And so you'll see that in the prioritization, which is included in the attachments. So what do we want in, uh, so what does the plan call for in, the, in this future park system? The idea is to get the park system uh, from, uh, to move it from, a set of sort of uh, isolated pieces to a connected system uh, where each of the parks uh, play a different role and there are a different component within the city's uh, larger park system. And so the draft vision statement then, which I always read this out because it's a quote, uh, build upon existing parks within the city to develop a well-maintained and safe park open space and recreation system that provides a range of amenities while enhancing natural ecosystems and contributing to a sense of place. Uh, so this draft vision statement came about from all of that engagement with the boards and commissions that each uh, board and commission and each member of the public and each response to the survey fed a little uh, different piece into this vision statement. So the element shifted around, the language changed, added, was removed, added, uh, and this is what we've gotten to at this point. And so within that vision statement, there are various goals. Uh, the most important one on everyone's list seemed to be maintaining the existing parks. And then uh, following from that, there's acquisition of land, uh, enhancement of existing programs, uh, increasing natural areas, providing, taking more advantage of green infrastructure, uh, and then ensuring safety uh, through lighting, visibility, patrolling. So some of that's safety through design and some of that's safety through uh, actual activity. And so then this park system has a whole bunch of different kinds of parks within it. So you've got parks for recreation, traditional playing fields, parks for placemaking, these can be plazas and streetscape. Parks for infrastructure, this could be transportation waste, this could be uh, uh, stormwater um, retention. Uh, and then all of these recreational facilities that are part of this system, whether it's a new swimming facility, indoor fields, uh, or outdoor amenities like dog parks, frisbee golf. Uh, so a range of amenities for a range of different people and interests. And so uh, with all of that as input, we take the existing park system that we have today and then turn that into a park system of the future, uh, which you can see, I'll flip back and forth here, existing parks we have, and then what we're really doing is filling in the gaps, making those connections, adding the amenities, providing the access. So it's, it's providing access uh, to the existing parks, it's making connections among the existing parks, and then providing amenities within them. And so then the policy actions that the city would need to take in order to realize that future park system, some of them have to do with funding, uh, whether it's finding new means for funding or finding out how are we going to stably fund these things over time. Uh, Follow-up planning efforts. What do we want the standards for the parks to be? What do we want? What are the priority acquisitions that we need to make in terms of land? Uh, and then um, partnerships. So the city is not going to be able to pay for all of these things out of uh, city tax. Uh, so it needs to find other ways to get these things done. Some of it is getting uh, more volunteer support, building on the Adopt-a-Spot program to develop them into true Friends of the Parks groups, uh, and then working on MOUs, whether it's with the city schools or with Fairfax County or with Arlington County to try and partner and share costs. Draft projects. Some of these things are uh, features within existing parks, uh, and some of these are new facilities that need to be constructed. So examples of features are things like enhancements to the WNOD trail, uh, whether those are plazas or better crossings, uh, installing disc golf courses, dog parks, uh, or facilities, whether that's uh, new indoor fields, the new swimming facility. Um, there's a mix of things. And so as I mentioned, the city is not going to be able to afford all of these things out of just raising the tax rate even if it wanted to, um, which I don't think it does. Um, and so we're going to have to look for ways to increase the number of tools we're using. What are more strategies we can use? So that's partnerships, looking for mutual gains, identifying grant sources. Uh, and then part of this is going to be uh, making the case for different park priorities. 
And when I talk about partnerships, there are lots of other groups that are interested in different things the park system is trying to achieve, whether it's field space, plazas, open space, indoor facilities, greenways and parkways. There are different groups that are trying to achieve the same end. So these are the groups to go after and see if they're interested in sharing. Uh, and so with that, I'll actually close out the presentation uh, so we can break away to the uh, sort of discussion. Uh, unless there are any questions we want to answer sort of in this format. All right. Thank you.